so I'm going to tell you a really short dream. Uh, this dream actually happened to me a little uh, more on the recent side. Uh, I would say within probably last, the last year. It was very short. Uh, so in this dream, I'm... Um, this is one of those kind of telepathic dreams. I'm, I'm by myself, but I'm not like I'm having uh, info give to me. So I'm standing in a room, and there is a beautiful plant. And it's flourishing, and it's green, and it's lush. And I think, wow, this environment must be perfect for this plant to grow. Look at how beautiful it is. And then I hear the Spirit tell me, I want you to take that plant, and I want you to move it to another room. Okay, so I pick it up, and I move it into another room in the house, and I place it down in the middle of the floor. The minute I do that, within literally seconds, it starts to turn brown, it shrivels, and it dies. So maybe it took four seconds for that to happen. And I am given this message. In this new room, this plant doesn't have what it needs to survive. When the ego is in a certain environment, it thrives. But if it is put in another environment, it dies off naturally. Mm. Ooh. Then I woke up. Mm -hmm. A little twist there, right? Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, mm -hmm. I didn't expect that. I didn't expect that. Obviously, maybe you all expected what I expected, which is we flourish and we thrive in environments that support us, and then when we make a change and we have to be put in another environment, we shrivel up and die. <laughs> nope, that's not what it was. It was the ego flourishes and thrives in certain environments. And when I am given guidance to move, literally, physically move to another place, to another room, to another person, it is because the ego can't survive there. And just put, if I put you there, the ego just melts away. It just goes naturally away. Now, I needed that because what was happening for me was I was getting very confused about guidance. And I was believing that if I was in a spiritual environment, if I had lots of time to meditate, to be by myself, to go on retreats, uh, to be alone, if I, if that, that is, I'm going to thrive spiritually. And then I would be getting this guidance to go do something or go offer something or go create something. And I'd go, oh, that's the ego. That's trying to trick me into uh, letting my spiritual life die. And I was given this dream that, ironically enough, you doing that, you are letting the ego thrive. And when I tell you to go over there, that's where it's going to die. Why? Because if you go over there, it's going to come up. It's going to come up, it's, and then it's just going to go, goodbye. It's going to come up and go. So anytime I was asked to expand or to do something that I thought was ego-driven was really spiritual-driven for my own good because it was the ego was saying, don't do that. You need to be all spiritual. You need to be alone. You need to be doing all this good stuff. And anything out there is going to you know, it's going to threaten your spiritual life when it was actually the reverse. The ego, I was keeping the ego nice and contained in my little spiritual world, right? How much ego comes up when you're living alone? <laughs> you know, nobody's in your space, nobody bothers you, it's great. You meditate, you don't have any, any co-workers that are driving you crazy. It's just, oh, life is good, this is awesome. What was happening, the ego was thriving in there because it wasn't even being seen. It was just all nice, quiet in a little corner. And then if I had to go out and change, that was the change is really where it's going to be happening. Um, and that changed everything for me, honestly. Um, 
I felt completely relaxed then about following guidance. I felt like, oh yeah, if I'm told to go there and do that, yeah, must be. That is the way the ego is going to be let go. And it actually reminds me of if anybody read The Untethered Soul, or no, The Surrender Experiment, which was the author of The Untethered Soul. He did a surrender experiment where he assumed everywhere where he was guided to go was for the purpose of letting go of the ego. And the ego would say, you don't want to do that. You don't want to go there. You want to meditate. Right? Because somehow the ego was thriving in that. So he knew that if he, if he was guided to go run a computer software company, that that was going to be how the ego was going to die. And so it turned everything around for me. Everything became like, oh, I could trust. I could trust that again. Yeah. And so... Um, to use this message, uh, we would need to consider um, what environments are keeping the ego alive. What environment is keeping the ego alive? So, in other words, um, you know, what? Where are you that you think? is actually not keeping the ego alive. You think it's actually letting the ego die, but, but is actually keeping the ego alive. Does that make sense? Does that question make sense? Yeah, so just take a moment and just consider that. Just consider that. Um, it's a new way to look at something. And then consider that changing form can be helpful to letting go of the ego. Changing form, changing, like literally changing something. Whether you're physically moving, or you're changing jobs, or you're changing relationships, or you're, you're changing something. How does changing form consider that that is actually helping you on your spiritual path? And changing could also be adding something, bringing something into your life. How is that helping you um, let go of the ego? Or just even consider the idea that it is helping you let go of the ego. Something that you would never consider, that maybe you even thought was not spiritual. And then just consider, where are you being led that you might have thought was the ego? But actually now, you're willing to consider that it's the spirit leading you. Anybody want to share any thoughts, any questions about that, any anything at all? So again, how do you know the difference? Mm -hmm. How do you know the difference between being ego-led or spirit-led? You know, like if you think it's a, a good thing to try something new, but you're fearful, do you do it anyway because you don't want to? <laughs> yeah, yeah, most likely. Um, you know, it's, a, it's an individual thing. I think the meaning of this dream is to relax and not assume the spirit only answers you in certain ways. Okay. Yeah, so it, it's, it's that it could seem quite odd to have an idea or to go in a certain th direction, and you might question that doesn't seem like that would be spirit the spirit leading me that's what this dream does for us is it says all open to all guidance and don't assume like oh the spirit will only guide me in this direction so let's say for an example let's say for an example i decide the spirit would never ever guide me to get into a special relationship let's say i just i, I just no no not gonna happen 
because, oh, that's the ego. That's the ego trying to get me. So if I hear guidance or I feel an inspired idea or something, you know, I'm like, I'm not listening to you. That's, but in essence, this dream says, I might just do that. I might just guide you to do that because I know exactly what you need for your spiritual unfoldment. And that is perfect for letting go of the ego. Whereas you're sitting there alone, that's not good because <laughs> the ego's thriving. So that's like an example of what we would assume the spirit would um, guide us to. So that actually helps a little bit on the confusion part. If all guidance, if you open it up and say, okay, everything can come from the spirit, even if it seems not like it's spirit, then we go through up naturally a discerning process. But if you automatically don't negate some guidance, you then can be open to saying, huh, is this really helpful? Be very clear about the purpose. Is this really helpful? Is this helpful for my spiritual unfoldment? Is this helpful to let go of any residual ego? Is this helpful to make new choices uh, where I made a faulty choice before? If you're clear about the purpose and you still get the guidance and you still feel strongly about it, even if you are afraid, and a lot of times we will be, right? That could be the, the, the ego saying, don't do it, I'm going to die. <laughs> you know, don't go there. Um, or it could be like the woman, the stillbirth dream. It could be, you know, I'm afraid, I'm afraid to move forward. That's still the ego. The fear is the ego. Yeah. So this, you'll never, if you feel fear, that's always ego. This, the fear is not, doesn't come from the spirit. So you, to discern, the spirit might say, oh, no, I didn't mean that. I actually meant this. But that wouldn't cause any fear. It, the fear comes from the ego saying, you can't do it. It's wrong or something like that. Great question. Anybody else? Thoughts about it? So at least if you, what I love about these dreams is they're like stories that stay in your mind. So if you are feeling like you're getting guidance uh, to, to make a change, like a form change or a literal change, um, think about the plan. Don't automatically assume that that's ego. You know, think about the plan and think about, oh, am I being instructed to be placed in, a, in an environment in which the ego will then die? And consider, just consider it. Just consider it and see if that helps you open up to more understanding about if that is the guidance for you.